The PAC DA program, in its most current and unembellished form, stands as a stark example of the persistent dissonance between the Russian state's defense ambitions and the realities of its industrial and technological landscape. For over a decade, this program has been held up as the crown jewel of Russia's future strategic aviation capabilities. Designed to replace aging platforms, it was meant to usher in a new era of stealth, range, and nuclear strike flexibility. Yet today, despite years of repeated promises, official pronouncements, and claimed developmental milestones, there is no credible evidence that the PAC-DA has progressed beyond the early stages of development. In fact, it increasingly appears to be less a serious military program and more a case study in overpromising, misallocating resources, and weaponizing perception rather than substance. What sets the PAC-DA apart is not its design, there is no shortage of advanced aircraft concepts globally, but the magnitude of the gap between what has been promised and what has been delivered. Since its public introduction as a program in the early 2010s, the bomber has been repeatedly described in glowing terms by state officials and government-linked defense enterprises. The narrative includes futuristic features, next-generation design, and promises of near-invisibility to enemy radar. It was claimed to have superior endurance, strategic payload capacity, and unmatched flexibility in mission profile. These characteristics, while impressive on paper, require a level of technological precision and production maturity that Russia has repeatedly failed to demonstrate in practice when it comes to complex aviation platforms. At the heart of the PAC-DA's stagnation lies the fundamental challenge of industrial capability. Stealth bombers, especially those based on flying wing configurations, are among the most complex aircraft types to develop. They demand high levels of quality control at every phase, from design to material selection, from manufacturing to system integration, from software development to structural assembly. Each one of these steps requires facilities and personnel trained to execute on extremely tight tolerances. This is especially true when dealing with stealth technologies, where even small imperfections in the airframe shape or radar absorbent coatings can significantly degrade performance. Russia has not demonstrated, in any verifiable way, that its industrial base can consistently meet those standards across the life cycle of such a program. Beyond the physical challenges, there are serious questions of systems integration. A platform like the PAC-DA would need to combine high-efficiency engines, advanced radar and electronic warfare suites, digital flight control systems, and mission software, all designed to work together under conditions of low observability and long-range flight. This level of integration requires a broad ecosystem of domestic suppliers, digital design infrastructure, test facilities, and iterative engineering programs. The existence of one or two working engines or subassemblies is not sufficient. What matters is whether those components can be reliably produced, maintained, and replaced at scale, and whether they can be integrated into a functioning aircraft that performs as intended under operational conditions. Russia's persistent internal inefficiencies, from fragmented management structures to poor procurement oversight, further compound these challenges. Many of the country's major defense manufacturers still operate under bureaucratic inertia inherited from Soviet-era institutions. Decision-making is slow, accountability is diffuse, and innovation is often stifled by risk-averse leadership and rigid command structures. These characteristics are ill-suited to the kind of flexible, high-speed development model required to build next-generation military aircraft. Modern aerospace programs demand rapid prototyping, agile problem-solving, continuous simulation and modeling, and relentless refinement. Without these traits embedded into the production culture, even the most promising concepts become bogged down in years of costly delays and under-delivery. Another critical factor is the chronic mismatch between defense rhetoric and economic sustainability. Developing and fielding an advanced bomber is not just a technical challenge, it is a financial one. It requires long-term investment, stable funding, and a budget that can absorb the inevitable setbacks and redesigns along the way. In Russia's case, resources are finite, and defense spending must be spread across numerous competing priorities. While announcements about breakthrough weapons systems often grab headlines, the reality is that sustained investment in any one program is rare especially when tangible results remain elusive over time. When funds are allocated in bursts or diverted to politically expedient projects, long-term development suffers. The PAC-DA has now become, in many ways, a symbol of this broader dysfunction. It is frequently cited in media and by officials, yet never shown. It is described in advanced terms, yet those descriptions have remained static for years. There are no known flight tests, no series production, 
no deployment timeline that is credibly anchored in evidence. What exists instead is an extended narrative designed to project strength and capability through words and speculation, rather than through tested and delivered outcomes. This strategy may serve a domestic propaganda function or provide temporary psychological leverage abroad, but it does little to alter the basic reality of the program's stagnation. The continued public focus on the POC DA, despite a lack of tangible progress, also distracts from the very real issues plaguing Russia's defense industry. Resources and political capital are spent reinforcing the illusion of momentum rather than addressing the root causes of underperformance. Leadership continues to make bold claims, not because they are supported by results, but because the alternative, admitting to structural failure, would undermine the entire narrative of resurgence and technological self-sufficiency that the government seeks to maintain. In this sense, the POC DA is not just a program, it is a political instrument. As time passes, the credibility of the POC DA erodes further. Advanced military projects require transparency, accountability, and verifiable milestones. None of those qualities are present here. With every year that goes by without a prototype flight, without an operational test, and without a viable production pathway, the program loses relevance and risks being remembered not as a strategic breakthrough, but as a long-running bluff. Russia's leadership may continue to refer to the bomber as evidence of future dominance, but among serious observers, the program increasingly serves as an example of how inflated ambition, disconnected from industrial and financial realities, leads not to strength, but to exposure. The POC DA is no longer just a defense project that is behind schedule. It is a litmus test for the state's broader military-industrial strategy. Its failure to advance is not the product of one mistake or technical difficulty, but the sum of many deeper systemic flaws, unreliable supply chains, mismanaged resources, outdated infrastructure, politicized project management, and chronic over-reliance on perception over performance. These issues cannot be corrected by propaganda or deflection. They require transformation, at the core, something that, so far, the POC DA saga shows little indication of achieving. Unless radical improvements are made in capability, transparency, and execution, the POC DA will not emerge as a functioning strategic bomber. It will persist as a story told by officials and echoed by loyal media outlets, but it will remain outside the realm of deployed, verifiable military assets. And in doing so, it will continue to reveal not just the limits of a specific project, but the limits of a system that consistently promises more than it is structurally equipped to deliver.